Good day, all, and welcome to the fifth and final post-match press conference for the West Indies men's team on the ICC Men's T20 World Cup 2021. Today we have the captain of the West Indies team, Mr. Kyron Pollard, and the champion himself, Mr. DJ Bravo, who today played his final game in West Indian colors. We do have quite a few journalists on today's engagement, um, obviously with it being a big one, Bravo's final game. So we're only going to be able to take one question for journalists, so please bring your best question to the fore. Um, if you have an indication of a question, please show me by raising your hand in the Zoom group chat. We'll try to take them in a chronological order, but we have to limit today's engagement to just about 15 minutes because, as I'm sure you guys are aware, we have quite a few other things to get done before we leave the stadium here. So the first question will go to someone who is NMK in the chat with a raised hand. Please proceed with your question. Hi, Bravo. Congratulations on your fantastic career. Uh, so how uh, you have left a big legacy behind. So any words on your career? Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. I think I have a fairly decent enough career to walk away from the game. Um, you know, being around the international circuit to represent my country for, let's say, 18 years, I think um, as a kid growing up, if you told me that 18 years ago, I'd have said that the line. So I'm very grateful to represent the West Indies for so long, um, build some strong friendship, friendships with, with, with some great people and some great players, and I'm very lucky to be playing this game. Akum? And I come. I'm not seeing you taking yourself off mute, so we'll move on to Michelle McDonald. Michelle, please proceed with your question. Thank you very much. Question is for Dwayne Bravo. I just went back to look at an interview I did with you in 2004 before you got selected for the West Indies team. I'd asked you to take us through your career and how you got into playing, and you mentioned Jar Charles Gullen. Yeah. So I'd like to know what you'd like to say to him now after 18 years with the West Indies team. Yeah, I want to say th thanks to Charles. Um, just yesterday I did an interview and I highlighted him again. I think he saw my talent at the age of six. And who knows? I, no one would have, I don't know where I would have been if it wasn't for Charles. Spotted me in Santa Cruz playing amongst my, my friends in a tennis court and give me the opportunity to join the best cricket club in the country, which is Queen's Park Cricket Club. So at an early age, I had, I had my foundation and my discipline built into me, and the love for the game was always there. So, you know, Chaz, uh, wherever you are, obviously in Trinidad, listening, thanks very much from the bottom of my heart, and on, my, on behalf of my family as well. And there's a lot of people who have big, uh, play a big part in my career. Growing up, obviously, um, Lara, my childhood mentor, Richard Smith, uh, my first captain for the national team, and there's, um, you know, the board brothers, Colin Board and Jerome Board. Um, you know, these people play a big part in my upbringing as a player. And, uh, you know, instilled early discipline and, and get me to understand the importance of playing the game hard and fair with passion, with a lot of pride. And uh, as a kid, that's all I wanted to do, just play cricket. And um, I'm very grateful that I was able to fulfill my childhood dream. All right, thank you. Thank you for the memories. Thank you for the great moments. And thank you for always speaking to me throughout the 18 years. Best wishes in your future. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks. Jelani Beckles. Hi, thank you, Dario. Um, my question is for Pollard. Hi, Pollard. I know Rob is four years older than you. Um, and I know you all grew up playing cricket together at Queen's Park and with TNT and so on. What does Bravo's career mean to you? Um, obviously, it means a lot. Um, what Bravo has done, you know, for West Indies cricket and sort of bothering all rounders, you know, in the Caribbean when he started, you know, it's paramount. Um, he spoke about the discipline that was instilled in him, and he was able to bring that sort of discipline, enthusiasm, and encouragement to each and every team that he represented. And we are fortunate and lucky to have, you know, an individual like him, you know, amongst us for the last, you know, 18 years or so. Um, my sort of first interaction with him would have been, you know, Queen's Park and Trinidad and Tobago cricket. But, you know, watching him before that, as I said, because I'm younger than him, the way that he celebrated, you know, his wickets, the flair that he batted with, you know, those are the things that, you know, I remember the most. And getting the opportunity now to share, you know, a friendship with him, I think, you know, that has exceeded, you know, everything that I've thought about. So, you know, for me personally, you know, wish him all the best in his future endeavours. Um, obviously, we'll still be seeing him on the cricketing circuit. And I'm sure he has a long sort of passion, you know, to give back to West Indies cricket, you know, especially. So, 
long may his career continue, you know, outside of international cricket. And thank you for being, you know, a great role model and mentor for us, you know, budding all rounders coming through the Caribbean. And I'm sure there's a lot of other youngsters in the Caribbean, you know, still looking up at you and want to tap into that brain and that knowledge of all the, you know, knowledge you have accumulated, you know, over these past 18 years. Thank you. Brandon Collar. Thank you. Brandon, we seem to be having a slight issue with your audio, so I'm going to ask you to mute and then we'll swing back. All right, Salman Khan, please proceed with your question. Thank you, bro. Congratulations for a wonderful career. You have served your country for uh, 18 years. Uh, is there any specific reason to retire? retire? Uh, and what about franchise cricket? Would you like to continue or get set for a... Yeah, I will continue playing franchise cricket for a few more years, as long as my body allow me to. Uh, my, my aim, obviously, I retired a few years ago, and uh, with change of presidency... Uh, change of leadership comes a change of heart and I wanted to uh, give back to the West Indies because I was still in a good place physically and enjoying my cricket and um, you know I, I had a, a brief chat with Paulie and said like you know I would like to come back and, and, and play in the shortest format which is my specialty and they give me the opportunity to play again and I'm very grateful for that obviously one year was um, hampered by the pandemic which none of us had control over but I had commit myself to play for another two years for West Indies and Obviously, one was spoiled by the pandemic, so I think this was the right moment for me to, to walk away from the game and now allow the, the next generation, the younger players who I share a very good uh, friendship with, to, to come through. And you know, they'll still see me around, but more passing on information, as Polly say, and, and trying to give my experience back to the next group of players. And, and uh, hopefully, they can also have a, a, a 12 to 18 year career as well. Shubman, Madan. Hi. 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 Hi, Bravo. So, uh, first of all, congratulations for the amazing uh, your international career. Uh, yeah, observing since, since the uh, time I started for the in 2004. So, uh, for me, uh, I want to ask one thing. What was your special moment in your international career throughout? And moreover, your friendship with Polar is since, lo since so long, since TNT days. So, how want to you to express your friendship with Polar and MS? Especially at the Chennai camp. Um, first question, what is it? <laughs> best memories. Best memories. Best memories. <laughs> and what was your favorite moment in the national career? Um, I have a yeah, few. I have a few. Uh, obviously, getting my test cap at Lords, um, walking on the field for the first time, that was a special moment. Obviously, my childhood year, Lara was the captain. So that moment was very special. Winning the ICC Champions Trophy in 2004 was another special moment for me. My first test 100 against South Africa. Another special moment, and obviously the two T20 World Cup, where I put a highly on top there, is another special moment for me. So I have, it's good that I was able to have some kind of success throughout my career. Um, in terms of our friendship with Polly, as he said before, obviously I'm a senior, but when he came into cricket um, at a very young age, we all spotted his talent and his ability. And um, you know, I think I wish he could have played some Test cricket. <laughs> But he didn't, even though he was good enough and uh, qualified to play. But having said that, to see the way he went on and become uh, a superstar in the game, and regardless of what people might say with him not playing Test cricket, he has his own legacy and he's a superstar of the game. And we should be grateful. I am grateful to have him as a teammate and more so a friend. Um, you don't very rare you'll see uh, individuals from the same country, basically almost around the same age, same type of players share the same kind of bond that we do because um, all we want is the best for each other and encourage each other, keep pushing each other. Um, so I'm very happy to have someone like that that I can call as a friend, not just a teammate but a friend and you know, I, he's one of the main reasons why I also came out of retirement to give my best to try and see if we could have you know, pushed for another uh, World Cup title but it wasn't to be but I'm still very happy with the way how we lead West Indies cricket in the last two years and West Indies need strong leadership. And he's a strong leader, and um, you know, 
this wasn't meant to be, but I know the individual well. He will bounce back strong um, with his character, and I'm very happy that I was able to be a part of this journey with him. Lennox Aldred. Uh, yeah. Yeah, greetings. Um, congrats, Brav, on your career. That's been entertaining. I, I joined a little bit late, but I'm not sure. Um, has Chris also announced his retirement officially? Um, <laughs> he said halfway. <laughs> He halfway retired, so he still has some cricket left. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what he's decided as yet, um, but yeah. Right, and Skipper, I mean, just a, a glowing tribute to, to, to your countryman. I mean, tough loss though, but how would you sum up the tournament? I know you, you mentioned something to Ian Bishop, but just generally right now. Um, again, you know, the, the words remain the same. Um, it has been, you know, disappointing. Um, but I said, you know, having said that, you know, some things were meant to be, some things were not meant to be, and this is one of them. Um, but as I also said, you know, this is an opportunity for us to, you know, think about what, you know, some of the guys in our dressing room, you know, Bravo, the Gales, you know, would have done, you know, for West Indies cricket over a generation of the last 10 years or so. We have not just done it in the Caribbean, we have done it all over the world and changed the face of T20 cricket when everyone thought that it's just going to be another sort of hit and giggle. So, you know, we still have some, you know, good moments to think about and to cherish. But as I said, overall, as a campaign, it has been difficult. And, you know, these things happen. Um, one tournament, you know, don't make guys bad cricketers, bad people. And I don't, I, I don't like the idea of, you know, chastising, you know, and some of the words and some of the things being said because of a campaign. At the end of the day, we are sportsmen. We, we come out, we give our heart. And each and every time we stepped on that cricket field, you know, I could assure that 100%, you know, was given, but it was not meant to be. Thank you. All right, we're going to take three more questions, and they're going to be from Sarab Samani, Sobayan Chakraborty, and Sheikh Akam. And that will close off today's engagement. Hi. Uh, many congratulations on a fantastic career, Gwen. Uh, my question is to both of you. Uh, who do you see as the guy who can take up the Dwayne Bravo mantle and role in the West Indies team now that you won't be there? Who will be the guy to bowl those death overs and slow balls in Yorkers? Who will be the guy to be able to hit sixes lower down the order? I mean, may, maybe not good enough to hit a test century, but at least, you know, hit some sixes lower down the order like you've done so often. Who, who do you guys, who do you both see as? I don't think we are um, we lacking in that department. Um, if you look at the recent CPL, uh, you know there are some good talent coming through, and I'm very um, excited about that. Um, you know, guys like Dominic Drakes, um, Odin Smith, or Mario Shepard, these are good quality all-rounders. Uh, those are names that, um, to look out for as well. They are young players, but with experience and guidance, I think they have the ability. And um, you know, it's just a matter of allowing them to be themselves and create their own legacy and create their own. Greatness, um, you know, with, with guidance of myself, Polly, um, you know, Chris, the, the senior players, just to make sure we keep these young players um, hungry and learning and uh, pass on our information. But, um, you know, Naim Young is another young player as well to look out for. So we not lacking with talent. That's one thing for sure, uh, especially in this format. Um, so, yeah. Uh, hi, Kyren. Hi, Pete. Hi, hi, Kyron. Hi, Dwayne. Uh, Subhan Chakravarti from TV9 Network. Right? Now, first of all, Dwayne, a big, big congratulations on a fantastic career. Thank you for entertaining us for all these years. Uh, my question is to both of you. Uh, we have seen some exciting talents in Caribbean, in the Caribbean with the CPL and everything. Uh, what would be your message to all the youngsters who are dreaming to replicate or replace uh, what Chris Gale or Dwayne Tower did for the West Indies? You know, to take that extra leap in that international circuit. Um. You know, for, for me personally, I'll just tell them that CPL is not the be-all and all of it. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of higher, better sort of cricket, you know, around the world. And as individuals, we need to lift our standards and not settle and be contented. Um, so my message would be that we need to work harder. We need to put in, you know, a lot of more thought in what we do. And again, you know, be disciplined in what we do. I think we have a, a mindset at times, you know, to be contented. But as I said coming through CPL, you know, dominating CPL is not the be all and end all of it. You need to come and you need to try to dominate on the world stage. And the world stage is at World Cups, you know, at IPL team, at IPL franchises, where you know all the best players around the world, you know, gather, you know, as one. So there's a lot of work to be done. We are not lacking, you know, for talent. But the 
work needs to start now. And we need to be honest and upfront about it. And we need to challenge ourselves in different ways. And Ruin, uh, can, we, can we see you in a coaching role or a mentorship role after you are done with franchising cricket as well in the future? What are the plans? Yeah, definitely. At some point when I decide to walk away from the game, uh, finally, uh, I would love to give back in the coaching department. Uh, so I already started to uh, you know, put things in place for when it's that time. So definitely, you will see me around. Like I said, cricket has given me everything. Cricket has, you know, give me the, the life I always wanted for myself and my family. So I think it's only fair I allow to, to give back the, to the game that has given me so much. So And again, I keep encouraging myself because of the talent that I see coming through in West Indies and also um, whatever team I play for around the world. So um, definitely will see me involved. Uh, first of all, thank you, DJ, for your uh, cricketing services. Um, well, uh, Wendy's got their senior men in the team before the World Cup with uh, a lot of hopes. Uh, how do you see that decision now as you end your World Cup campaign today? And uh, also, I want to hear from both of you, your favorites, uh, like who do you see winning this World Cup? Um, again, obviously, we, we brought you know seniors and our experienced players you know, in this campaign. We thought that they, uh, we are going to be the ones, you know, to get us over the line, you know, to try to defend, you know, our title, and it didn't happen. Um, you know, these things happen. It's not the first time, you know, you don't qualify, you know, in a tournament or anything like that. It's not the first time guys would have failed, you know, throughout a throughout a campaign. So, you know, we gave it our best shot, and our best shot was not good enough, and we accept that. So, it's about moving on now and you know, trying to rebuild, you know, from here, and using the knowledge of some of these guys and the youngsters, you know, to come. So. Let's see what happens in the in the future. All right, and that'll bring us to the end of today's engagement. On behalf of Cricket West uh, Indies, what about no. <laughs> the other question? Uh, who do you think are the favorites for this World Cup? West Indies. <laughs> <laughs> all the best, all the other teams that remain in the competition. It has been a good tournament, and made the best team win. On behalf of Cricket West Indies, I want to say thanks to the ICC Media and PR team for putting on these engagements, and thank you for hosting us throughout the past month or so. I want to say thanks to all the media that have taken time out of your busy schedules to be here with us and to pose your questions, as hard as they may be sometimes to answer. And on behalf of everyone, I just want to say congratulations, DJ Bravo, on a successful 18-year career. Thank you for the service to cricket. Thank you for the service to West Indies cricket in particular. And I wish you good luck and good everything in all your future endeavors. Thank Skipper, you. thank you for being here as well. Continue to work on that singing. <laughs> David, what <laughs>